Welcome back to another Random Bits. In this one, we're going to create this cool asteroid field. All right, so we're going to start with a, an empty 3D project. Um, I'm using Unity 2017.4.18 F1. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do to create our asteroid field is to import an, a low power poly asteroid asset. So I'm just going to drag and drop that in here. And um, we're then going to create ourselves a new material. Call it asteroid mat. And we're going to drag the uh, normal into the normal map and fix up the normal map. And we're going to leave it as a, a white material. And then we're going to take our asteroid and drag it into our scene. And we're going to take the asteroid material and drag it onto our asteroid. Um, and so we now have the material on there. And if we run this, we can see we have an asteroid floating in space. All right. So the next thing to do is to um, uh, make this look a bit more like space and not somewhere on Earth. Uh, so what we're going to do is going to use a space uh, skybox, and we're going to get that. And there's a number of free assets on the asset store, and the asset we want is skybox uh, volume two by the Hedgehog team. So grab that asset and import it into the project. And we're just going to import everything. Right, so back in our scene now, we're going to uh, select the main camera, add a component, call it uh, search for skybox. And then we're going to pick a material. And the skybox we're going to pick is DSB. So this kind of purple nebula one. Uh, there's a bunch of other ones that you can grab if you want. Uh, but we're going to use the uh, DSB for this tutorial. Awesome. Um, so let's run that. And uh, here's our, our skybox. Now you'll notice that it, the asteroid isn't really seemingly taking the uh, any light information from our skybox. And uh, that's probably because our directional light that we have is so strong it's overpowering um, the skybox. So let's delete that directional light. And now if we run it, we see we have um, some purple lighting or some lighting seemingly from the skybox. But you'll notice that it's got a bit of an orange uh, tint at the bottom. And that is because if we go to the window uh, lighting settings, we see that it's actually using uh, the default skybox, which is this brown and blue skybox here as for as a source of light. So we need to change that to be our DSB nebula. And if we close that window now, you we see we've got some purple lighting on there. And if we run our scene, we see we've got lighting coming from the skybox um, and lighting up our asteroid. All right, so uh, we now have one asteroid, but actually we want an entire field. Uh, so let's uh, make a whole bunch more asteroids. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our asteroid and we're going to drag it into here to create a prefab. Uh, we're going to just rename that to make it a bit easier to see. And we can take it out of our scene. Um, we're also going to just position the camera in the center of our world because what we're going to do is we're going to create an asteroid field in a sphere around our camera and then from the game object menu we're going to do uh, create empty and we're going to call this um, field center and this is the point around which we're going to create our asteroid field um, so on the field center object now uh, we're going to add a new component we're going to add a new script and we're going to call the script generate 
asteroid field. All right. And then we're going to open up that script. So the first thing we were going to want to do um, is set up a couple of variables so we can kind of tweak and tune our asteroid field. Um, and if we make these public variables, uh, then they are configurable from the inspector within Unity. Uh, so the first variable we're going to create is a transform, and we're going to call it asteroid roid prefab. And this will allow us to set the prefab that the, the script can use to uh, create different asteroids. And we're going to create a public integer uh, called field radius. We're going to set that to default to 100. And we're going to create another public int. And we're going to call that asteroid count, uh, which is the number of asteroids we're going to create. And we're going to set default that to 500. And then in our start uh, method for the script, so this happens when the uh, object is uh, when the script is first run or when um, the field center object is created uh, in our scene. So what we're going to do there is we're going to loop uh, through all, uh, as many asteroids as we have asteroid count. And inside this loop, we are going to create an asteroid using the instantiate method. Um, the thing we're going to create is our asteroid prefab. Um, we're going to position it in a sphere randomly around our center point. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a random, random um, dot inside unit sphere, and we're going to multiply that by field radius. And we're also going to set the rotation for the asteroid just to identity. And that will do there. Awesome. So now if we save that and jump back to Unity, we will see that when we run, uh, we get an error. And that is because we have not assigned the prefab. So the first thing we need to do is grab our asteroid prefab and drag it into that slot over there. And now we can run. Awesome. And now we have a whole bunch of asteroids uh, floating in space. All right, let's just save our scene. I'm just going to call it main. So um, the next thing to do is um, set it up so we can actually look around our asteroid field because at the moment we can only see a small portion of it and in theory it's a whole uh, sphere of asteroids all around our center point or ourselves. So let's have a look. So the first thing we want to do um, is we're going to import from our standard assets. We can go to assets, import package and import the utility package. And we're just going to import everything there. If you don't have the standard assets um, installed, then you can get them from the asset store. Um, if you're in the asset store and you do search for standard assets from Unity, you can just install this particular package and you'll then be able to um, install the utility area section of that package. So once that's installed, what we want to do is we on the main camera, we want to add a new component. And the component is the simple mouse rotator. And what we're going to do is we're going to change two fields. So we're going to control the rotation range in the X. We're going to make that 180, and in the Y direction, we're going to make that 360. And if we run that now, you'll see that we can use the mouse to look around and look at our asteroid field. 
Now look at our asteroid fields, they're all looking, uh, it's looking a bit boring. All the asteroids are pretty much the same size and the same, I mean, it's clear that it's the actual same model used over and over again. Uh, it's all the same rotation and the same size. So let's uh, fix that and make things a little bit more interesting. Uh, so going back to our asteroid prefab, I mean our field center and our uh, generate asteroid field script. We open that up again. Uh, let's make something, make it look a bit more interesting. So the first thing we're going to do is instead of doing quaternion identity, uh, we're going to make this random dot rotation. And that means each of the asteroids will get a different rotation. And the next thing we want to do is we're just going to um, assign this to a temporary variable. Uh, and then we, what we want to do is on that transform that we've just created or the asteroid that we've just created, we want to set the local scale and we want to set it to the local scale uh, multiplied by a random amount. And in this case, we're going to use random range and we're going to grab a random value between 0 0.5 and 5. Right. So when we run this now, we have an entire asteroid field with all different sized asteroids and all different uh, rotations, which is looking pretty good. Um, the only problem is that these are very, it's a very static asteroid field. It doesn't look particularly uh, interesting um, because everything's just sitting there. Uh, so let's add some uh, motion to the asteroids. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the asteroid prefab. Um, and the first thing we're going to do is add a rigid body so that we can control the asteroids with physics. Uh, we're going to use turn use gravity off because otherwise they'll just drop to the floor. We don't really want that. And uh, since we're in space, and the other thing we're going to add here is a mesh collider so that we can have the asteroids bouncing into each other. And we need to check this convex flag, otherwise uh, Unity complains when we create the asteroids. Cool. And then the next thing we want to do is add a script to the asteroid prefab. So we're going to add a new script. And we're going to call the script add random uh, movement. We're going to open up the script. All right, so what we're going to do is we need a couple of variables. Once again, let's create some public variables. Um, let's create a public float called min spin speed, which is going to allow us to control um, how fast the asteroids are spinning. We're going to default that to one. Uh, we're going to create a public float max spin speed and we're going to set that to five. Uh, next up, we also want to set uh, a, a, um, a value for how fast they move. Uh, so we're going to set up a thrust variable, a minimum thrust variable, and we're going to set that to 0 0.1, default that to 0 0.1, and we're going to create a maximum thrust to 0.5. Cool, and then lastly, we're going to set up a private variable called spin speed. Uh, which we're going to use to control the spin of the object or the asteroid. So in our start method, um, so when the asteroid gets created, we're going to initialize these variables. So this firstly with spin speed, we're going to make that equal to random uh, range. And we're going to do it from our min spin speed to our max spin speed. 
We're also going to create a temporary float called thrust. And we're going to equal that to our random dot range of min thrust and max thrust. So those values will be set up with some random number between the minimum and the maximum spin speed and thrust. Um, and then we need to grab hold of the uh, rigid body for the asteroid. So we can use the get component method of type rigid body. And then with using the rigid body, whoops, rigid body, we're going to add an initial force to the object. We're going to do transform dot forward, and we're going to multiply that. So basically, in the forward direction of wherever the asteroid has rotated to, we're going to add thrust in that direction. So we're going to multiply it by our uh, thrust value. And the force mode, which is how the force is applied, we're going to use impulse, uh, which you see adds an instant force impulse to the rigid body using its mass. All right. And so that sets up the initial motion or the motion for the asteroid. Uh, what we need to do is add the spin. Uh, and we're going to do that in the update method. What we're going to do is we're going to do a transform.rotate um vector three dot up so around the up axis of the object and we're going to rotate it by the spin speed multiplied by time dot delta time which pretty much means that um this is adapts for the actual frame rate that we play in at or that your game is running at. Alrighty, so we save that up and we drop back into Unity. And if we run this now, we will see we now have our asteroids and they all slowly moving around. Uh, if you find a particularly fast moving one somewhere in the scene here, uh, you may be able to see a collision or two. Oh, there's one happening perhaps over there somewhere. Um, and yeah, excellent. So that's about it. Um, probably a couple of things to point out. Firstly, uh, we've scaled up the objects, but we really didn't adapt the mass of the object. Uh, so basically when the asteroids collide, they will treat it as the same mass. Uh, so if we actually did adjust in our, um, add run random movement, or perhaps in our, uh, generate asteroid field, we could actually, uh, set the mass uh, based maybe perhaps on the relationship or the size of the of the how big the object um, we've scaled the asteroid uh, if we do that you probably have to uh, tweak with the the thrust as well also the other thing you'd probably want to do is in that generate asteroid field script uh, when you instantiate uh, the asteroid you probably want to make it a child of the field center um, and because that would allow it uh, you to move the field center and the entire asteroid field to uh, move with you. All right. Well, I hope that's been helpful. If you've liked this video, please hit the like button and uh, remember to subscribe so you can get updates whenever I release a new video. Thank you for watching.